बच्चों वी नाउ बिगिन एनदर एप्लीकेशन ऑफ डेफिनेट इंटीग्रल्स इन फैक्ट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इवेल्युएटिंग एरियाज ऑफ प्लेन कर्व वी विल फर्स्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लिंक अ डेफिनेट इंटीग्रल विद एरिया अंडर द कर्व let us see how to do this suppose this is the graph of a function y is equal to fx and let us observe the graph from a to b and we can assume for definiteness that it is continuously increasing in this interval a to b now suppose there is a point m at a distance x from origin and a neighboring point n at a distance x plus delta x from origin and draw the ordinates at big m and big n the ordinate at m will have length fx and this will have length f of x plus delta x now suppose this area and this is part of the area which we want to calculate the area of the curve from a to b so this area say delta a very small area because m and n are neighboring point this will lie between fx into delta x into f of x plus delta x into delta, uh, delta x why because this length is fx and this breadth will be delta x so the area of this rectangle will be which is part of the shaded area is fx delta x but there is another rectangle like this and that rectangle's area will be f of x plus delta x into delta x length into breadth now let us divide by delta x so we will get fx less than delta a by delta x less than f of x plus delta x now what is the limit of extremes when delta x approaches 0 so this is free from delta x to so limit is fx itself and this is the uh, f of x plus delta x so as delta x approaches 0 it approaches fx uh, for some time we can assume the continuity so that it is fx so therefore the limit of this will also be fx and hence we obtain limit delta x approaches 0 delta a by delta x is equal to fx remarkable rate of change of area with respect to x coordinate is equal to value of the ordinate at x and this of course equals da by dx is equal to fx so this is the most important relation which will link a definite integral with area now mechanically newton leibniz formula is that a to b fx dx is value of anti derivative of fx at upper limit b minus value of the anti derivative at a now from here the anti derivative of fx is simply because da by dx is fx so therefore uh, value of anti derivative at uh, b will be value of big a at b now let us see what what do we mean by value of a that the value of area at b, uh, at small b or at the upper limit b so since uh, we we can we can have any reference 
point from here, even the origin is taken as the point of reference. So value of the area at D will be this area, starting from origin. And minus uh, value of the same area at A means this area. If we subtract this, we will get the area from A to B. So therefore, this equals area of curve y is equal to fx area of curve y is equal to fx with x-axis or bounded by x-axis from x is equal to a to x is equal to b. So this is the well-known area formula. Our embarrassment is that uh, function we have assumed that it is increasing but this embarrassment will easily go when a, it is both increasing and decreasing. First of all, for the decreasing case also in a similar manner, only thing that the inequality will reverse, but the final outcome will be same. So even in the decreasing case, the formula follows that this area equals a to b fx dx. But if it is both increasing and decreasing, say something like this, then also the formula follows a, b. Suppose a to c it increases, then c to b it decreases. So a to c, c to b will ultimately be a to b. So therefore, the uh, our crisis uh, is not there now because we have shown that even if it is increasing and decreasing both the area from a to b between the curve x-axis and the ordinates drawn at a and b is a to b fx dx in all the cases. Now, there are several things linked with this formula of area. First of all, first comment, if some area lies above the x-axis, some area lies below the x-axis, then a to b fx dx will not give us the practical area. It will give us the theoretical area, not the practical area. So, the area, actual area, for which a real technocrat may be interested will be a to c fx dx with a modulus sign plus c to b fx dx with, with or without modulus sign because that area is positive. So this is the correct area. In case there is a symmetry, then this can be avoided. Suppose this is the circle x minus 1 whole square plus pi square is equal to 1. Now this is the point 0, this is 2 comma 0. So if we calculate the area from here to here, then because of symmetry, the area will be 2 times, you know, this is 1, 0, 0 to 2, and fx dx. Now, what is fx here? y square is 1 minus x minus 1, the whole square. So, y or that means fx is 1 minus x minus 1 whole square with the uh, with a plus sign because y is positive. So the area is 2 times 0 to 2, 1 minus x minus 1 whole square under root px. The second point, very important point, this is about the uh, positive area, negative area, use of symmetry. The second point is area bounded by y axis at times the shape of the area we are interested in is like this. y is equal to fx is the curve. Suppose it is possible to solve x in terms of y and x is equal to gy. These are the limits c to d. In this case, the area is c to d, gy, dy or x dy.
Then the third point, area bounded by two curves, say y is equal to fx, y is equal to gx, from a to b will be equal to a to b fx minus gx into dx. The most important thing about this formula that this holds true in all the cases where uh, whether uh, gx lies in the first quadrant or say in the fourth quadrant, uh, even in this diagram this will be valid. Yeah, there is no need of taking modulus in this diagram also. This formula holds true because minus gx and gx is negative so actually area is getting added. That is the thing. So area bounded by two curves, then area uh, sometimes area with y-axis and then negative area we have to take care. Finally, when vertical ordinates are not there, then we may have to add or subtract for area. Add or subtract for area. For instance, suppose this is a circle and this is a parabola and suppose we are interested in this area. First of all, by symmetry, this area, this required area is double of this area and this area is sum of these two areas because there is no single curve here. So from here to this point, say C, uh, fx dx where fx is the parabola or y is equal to fx is the parabola then c to this point another gx dx where gx is the circular arc y is equal to gx is the circular arc equation so we get the area by summing up sometime by difference suppose this is a parabola and this is a line now if we do from 0 to or say from A to B, we get this area. So that means some unwanted area is included in that, so which will be obtained by subtracting the area between the line x axis. In 12th class board examinations of our country, area by other methods is not allowed because they are testing your application knowledge of definite integral. But in competitive examination, we can always do it. Whenever an uh, area between uh, a line and an x-axis, that will either be a trapezium or will be a triangle. So we can immediately go for half base into height or half sum of the parallel side into the height for trapezium. So we have introduced the basic concept of area between the curve x-axis. Now in the next session, we will start curve tracing. Before we start area, we have to know the trace of all standard curves and all, you know, some uh, new types of curves which are required for doing advanced problems of competitive examinations.